Thanks for taking some time to uh, spend with us. My name is Chris Rosen. I'm the program director of offering management. I own the IBM Cloud Container Service. Uh, we'll, we'll get into what that actually is here in a few minutes. Really excited um, to have Dan Garfield here from CodeFresh and one of our partners in the space to help us and help you as you're running in a multi-cloud or hybrid cloud environment to be able to automate those deployments, automate those workloads, regardless of where you're actually running them. So uh, for an agenda today, we're going to talk about, you know, Dan's gonna get us started with the actual continuous delivery chain and what that actually means. Then we'll hand it back over to me and I'll kind of talk about IBM Cloud, our container service, and then we're each gonna do a quick demo showcasing the IBM Cloud as well as CodeFresh, and then we're gonna wrap it up with some Q&A. So please, there is a Q&A in the tool. If you have a question, feel free to add it here at any time and we'll, we'll address those at the end. So with that, I am now gonna hand it over to Dan and let Mr. Garfield walk you through some of the CodeFresh concepts. Today we're gonna to talk about the uh, CICD and really the question is, how do we get from git commit to the Kubernetes cluster? In other words, how do we make a change and then have it appear where we want it to be? So we would say we wanna figure out how to get from here to there and what goes in between. Well, in between, we're gonna to have to figure out some stuff. We, we're starting from the git commit so that means we're going to need to have a webhook, which is going to fire when code is changed, which is going to start a pipeline, which is going to build the image and validate the changes. And what are the changes? Well, the changes are actually two things. It's, a, it's your code that you're validating, but more than that, it's actually your image that you're validating. What is your image? Your image is a combination of your code at the top and everyone else's code at the bottom, because an image is really the, uh, the combination, right? So. This is what we talk about when we're validating. It's actually not validating just your code. It's validating your code and everyone else's code, which is another way of saying that we're validating the image. Um, and that should be clear. I mean, this is one of the basic, you know, core tenets of, of Docker and, and why it's valuable, why containerization is awesome. Uh, so at the end of the step uh, of where we have where we have now created this image, we can now push the image, which means the image needs somewhere to go because we need an image repo because it's going to store the image and it's also going to record everything about the image and it's going to solve the, the, the problem of provenance, which we'll talk about in a minute. And the whole point of that is so that we can roll forwards and backwards, roll forwards and backwards where? To Kubernetes, right? This is where we're going to host our application. So uh, now that we're cruising right along, uh, the next step is we need to have a connection to our cluster. Why? So we can deploy it, deploy to it, so we can monitor to it, so we can roll back, hopefully not often, and so we can modify that deployment, and we do all that so that our container can update smoothly. And what is your container? Your container is something that contains your image that we just built. Oh, hopefully this isn't too confusing. It's a bit of a Jacob's Ladder to go through this whole thing. But uh, your container is, the, is gonna be basically the image that you built is gonna run on your container and hopefully it's gonna run well. But your container is not everything. In fact, your container is not your application because your container, uh, in fact, your app is lots of containers, right? And hopefully they're all happy little containers. And if you remember, our whole goal was to figure out how to get from here to there onto our Kubernetes cluster so there's kind of a final piece that we're going to look at in the process, which is that you need to scale all of this for your application. Remember, we started off with a webhook that was fired to build an image so that we could validate it. Then we could push it into our image repository so that we can have visibility into this thing. We can roll forwards and backwards, and then we could actually get it onto our cluster. And now we need to do it for lots of things. Um, and I'm gonna introduce the idea of validating image together, which we would call a Helm chart, and I'll explain what Helm is. Um, and all of this is basically to validate our infrastructure as code. So the whole point of doing all of this stuff is so that your team can easily update the application, right? That's, that's the simple goal, and we had to go through all these steps. So uh, 
what is what does it mean to validate your images together? Um, and what is Helm? Well, Helm, this is this is this is where it comes from. Your app is lots of containers, right? And it's not just the containers, but it's also how they relate to each other, how they network together, uh, how they how they uh, interact, right? And Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes. Okay, so it lets me say um, I have this I have this image that I want to run, and it needs to have uh, all of these Kubernetes properties, and also it needs to work with these other things. And that's what Helm does. Um, so to, to back up to a very high level, we're really talking about three components. One is your code repository. You know, it could be GitHub, could be GitLab, could be Bitbucket, we don't really care. We need Kubernetes CI CD, which is gonna do this whole workflow engine that we've been describing. And we need the cluster. And, and the jobs of these things are basically, I wanna have a place to commit code to, I want to have a place to validate and deploy that code, and then I need a place to host that code. So hopefully this is uh, somewhat clear, but but basically we went through kind of this um, introducing a lot of concepts. And as we go forward, Chris is going to talk about why IBM Cloud uh, makes sense as a place to host Kubernetes. And then we're going to get into how we actually validate and deploy um, in a real world world scenario, and we'll actually make some changes and watch code and pipelines fly. And so all of those concepts that I introduced, they should become much more concrete as we go along. Chris?